Would you please welcome our friend, researcher, Terrasar researcher, cryptozoologist, <laughs> Garth Gessman. Thank you, thank you. <clears throat> thank you for having me. It really is an honor to be a part of this. Um, I'm just one of the long lines of those who have gone before me and doing uh, similar research. Uh, Dr. Ba heard the testimony of a man that had seen a pterosaur in World War II. He followed up on it and uh, found out these things glowed. He didn't realize that and kept the ball rolling for three trips and then pollination came from one of those trips and then go, went for a couple more after that uh, with him and his son. And <clears throat> then David Wetzel and I wanted to go as well. Pollination was uh, organizing a trip and it got David Wetzel and I to go. David Wetzel is in, in charge of uh, Genesis Park. He's the president of Genesis Park and I have been named the director of field research for Genesis Park. Um, now, the reason I'm wearing this shirt over my Genesis Park shirt is because my wife told me to put this shirt on. <laughs> Dim the lights all the way down because that's how we do our research. No, there are no bright lights when we do our research. The only bright lights might come from one of these creatures, but there are no bright lights anywhere else. They like to hang out in the dark for the most part. They do come out occasionally in the daylight, but it's very rare. But thank God they do come out in the daylight because that's what got our initial ball rolling. Uh, and we'll get into some specific sightings of how that happened. I want to talk about understanding dinosaurs and how they fit into scripture. Uh, so many people uh, from an evolutionary background point of view want to cr separate man from the long, long ages of evolutionary past. And this is simply a figment of their imagination. Uh, cooked up by people that pretty much reject Christianity and the Bible. And um, uh, I could get into that, that's a whole other subject, but you know, there's many tangential, very relevant though, subjects in creation science, and that was just one of them. Uh, many, many men uh, have gone the wrong direction in their science and come up with bad conclusions. Now, God made all the animals in six literal days, and that includes dinosaurs, pterosaurs, and plesiosaurs, all the animals with man, and they only made them a few thousand years ago, according to the numbers in Genesis and the rest of Scripture. All land-based animal kinds got on the ark. Representatives of every kind got on the ark, but they all got off the ark. Very important to understand, they got off the ark too. Every country has accounts of dragons coexisting with man. Many of the accounts show that dragons were being killed as well. And when we asked, uh, when someone asked, what happened to the dinosaurs? We have been indoctrinated not to put all these facts together. The ancient term for dinosaur, plesiosaur, pterosaur, it was dragon. It's an all-encompassing term for these large, dominant creatures. In scripture, the word dragon is not applied to the flying uh, pterosaurs, however, it's the word seraphim, or fiery flying serpent. That's the term used. But throughout the rest of history, in all cultures, the flying ones, the swimming ones, the walking ones, all got that term, dragons. Uh, like I say, with, with the exception of Hebrew. There have been reports throughout history of these creatures, and they're still being reported today in remote locations. There's two basic kinds of pterosaurs. The short-tailed pterosaurs, the very first one found was called pterodactylus. It did not have a head crest. It was pretty much the size of a seagull. And it was uh, a short-tailed pterosaur, so therefore all the short-tailed pterosaurs thereafter were called pterodactyloids. pterodactyloids. You can also call pterodactylids. Take your choice. The long-tailed pterosaurs are another variety and the first one found was Rampharynchus, so all the long-tailed pterosaurs are called Rampharynchoids. And there is one exception of a genus that, or possibly up to a family level, that is 
a tail, a short-tailed variety of Rampharynchus, a Rampharynchoid, that uh, is a single exception. Uh, they pretty much can still be differentiated, even though they don't have their long tail like this Rampharynchoid, because the claws on a Rampharynchoid only go a third of the way out. The claws on a pterodactyloid go halfway out. They can easily be seen at a distance what they are. The long flight finger on a Rampharynchoid pterosaur is significantly longer to its body length for its body size. Just in case we ever get one, we'll be able to identify whether it's a Rampharynchoid or a pterodactyloid right away. So the scripture uses the word seraphim to describe angels that shined and that uh, cried out, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come in Isaiah chapter 6. But Isaiah, the same author, also uses the same term seraphim or seraph to describe fiery flying serpents. That's the Hebrew word he uses with the adjective flying. Why would Isaiah use the same word to describe a flying reptile and an angel? Well, we couldn't quite figure it out. I mean, birds fly too, so that, that, it's, they're, that, they have that in common, but it doesn't seem to fit until Dr. Baugh got a call from Dr. Walter Lang that there was a, a pilot in World War II who saw a living pterosaur. 